So I told a story yesterday of a, a beggar who was sitting under a tree for his whole life begging. And when he died, they found that there was a treasure chest actually buried just six inches beneath where he sat and how he had spent his whole life begging. And actually there was treasure right below him. And I had spoken about how that really is how so many of us live, that we were looking outside for what we think we need. We're looking outside for our happiness. Oh, if just that person would like me, if just that person would eat lunch with me, if just I could get a raise, if just I could have, you know, a new mobile phone, if just I could have a nice car, if just I could lose 10 pounds, then I'd be happy. That we're, we're always looking outside for happiness, for joy, for peace as our treasure. But actually inside, yeah, exactly, but actually that treasure chest is inside us. And so his question was, he said, well, so why, why does God not give the gyan, the wisdom of knowing where the treasure chest is? The wisdom is there. We, we come onto this earth with a full package a package of our karma from past births. But we also come with buddhi that obviously has to be nurtured, our intelligence, our intellect. We come with what we call sanskaras, which are impressions upon us. Again, those from past births. But we get more and more sanskaras as we move through this birth. But we also come with something called free will. And that free will leads us into ignorance. The ignorance is an ignorance of identifying as the body. So if I go around and I say to you, who are you? You're going to give me your names. You're going to give me your ages. You'll tell me what grade in school you're studying in or what your job is. And You'll give relationships with other people. You'll give, you'll give so much of that. But that's not actually who you are. That's the false identification with the body. And when we've, when we've falsely identified with the body, that's when I begin to suffer. And then I use my free will to ease my suffering in the way that I think it will ease it, but it's all out of ignorance. So if I've identified as the body and I say, oh my God, I'm, I'm way too dark skinned or I'm way too poor or I'm way too short or I'm way too fat or I'm way too whatever, whatever I may be, I'm going to use my energy to change that. And so whether it's about being jealous of people who I look at, who have what I want, whether it's running around trying to buy the things that are going to make me feel the way that I think I should feel, it's going to lead toward greed. It's going to lead toward grabbing. It's going to lead toward pushing things away. I don't like this. I don't want this. This makes me angry. This makes me sad. This makes me depressed. That is gross. I'm pushing things away. Or I'm grabbing things. Well, that leads to suffering. But that's my own free will that has done that. And this is why it's so important to use our free will for things that increase, increase our buddhi, increase our intellect, increase our intelligence, that take us, take us closer to knowing the truth. This is, this is why we come to satsang. This is why we go and sit at the feet of the saints, the gurus. This is why we meditate. 
This is why we read spiritual literature. Because it, it fills us with truth. It brings us back into the presence of truth away from the falsehood, the ignorance of the body. Because when I know I am the soul, then somebody sent me a mean text message. It's not going to ruin my day. Someone was rude to me. It's not going to ruin my day. I'm going to be able to be loving back to them. But if I'm, if I'm falsely identified as the body, then it goes like this. Oh my God, they sent me this message. Who the hell do they think they am? They are. How dare they? I have been so good to them. I've done everything for them. I always help them. I'm always nice to them. How dare they? How dare they be mean to me? How dare they talk badly behind my back? Right? This is, this is the stuff that upsets us. Somebody tells us, you know, so-and-so was talking nonsense about you. So-and-so said this. So-and-so said that. And suddenly, no matter how beautiful our day may have been going, suddenly we're furious or we're deeply hurt. Same emotion, just either directed inward or directed outward. But if instead in that moment, I'm able to drop into the truth of who I am, a few things happen. Number one, I'm not hurt because I understand. I'm not, I'm not this body that needed that person's approval in order to be okay, in order to be enough, in order to be worthy. And something else happens, which is my vision expands. And so I'm able to understand, A, that the person telling me may be lying that it may not necessarily be true, that the person telling me may be telling me for their own reason, or that the person who hurt me, they didn't mean to. And I'm able to experience love and compassion for them because I'm able to tap into the source of love within me rather than suddenly just turning on my you know, hatred manufacturing plant. That's usually what we do, right? Something, something negative happens and it's like, all right, all lights on in the hatred plant, all lights on in the anger plant. But the problem with that is long before it hurts somebody else, it hurts me. There's a beautiful saying that being angry at someone or hating someone is like drinking poison and expecting that someone else is going to die. Right? We get angry. We become furious. I'll show them. I'll teach them. I'm going to make them feel really bad. But I'm the one living in the anger manufacturing plant in that pollution. That's what's around me. So I have to use my free will to cultivate enough buddhi, enough intellect to understand in that moment I have a choice. It's not automatic stimulus response like I'm Pavlov's dogs. It, it's a choice. Somebody could say, God, you know, that person was talking nonsense about you. And I actually have a choice of how to respond. I don't have to get angry. I don't have to be furious and upset. There's so many other alternatives. And a great, a great practice on a spiritual path is to ask yourself, All the time, whenever you're about to react, whenever you're about to get super angry, feel super hurt or say something mean or do something, 
Ask yourself one simple question. Is there an alternative? And I'll give you a hint. There's always an alternative. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to take the alternative, but we're so used to our own patterns. Somebody does something, I get angry, I hit them. Or I get angry and I hurt myself. Well, the next time that happens, just ask yourself, is there an alternative? Do I have an option here? Instead of feeling hurt, instead of turning on my hurt manufacturing plant, can I turn on my love manufacturing plant? It's up to me. I'm the boss, I'm the caretaker, I'm the one who switches the lights on and off. It's all up to me. But we have to use, use our power of discrimination there. This is, why, this is why we meditate on our third eye. The third eye, the Agya Chakra, is the energy center of the power of discrimination that enables us to see truth from falsehood, that enables us to see, ah, actually they're divine. What they said was not so divine. What they did was not so divine. But who they are is divine. How I'm feeling is not divine, but who I am is divine. And can the divine in me connect with the divine in them? But that takes buddhi, intellect. That takes a power of discrimination. It takes an open third eye. It takes a connection to the source of love within me. So we have to use our free will for that. The gyan is there. Puja Swamiji always says, the light is shining. But if we're sitting in a dark room with the curtains closed, that's not the sun's fault. You can't blame the sun for that. The sun is shining. But if we're choosing to stay inside behind the curtains, that's our choice. The gyan is there. The wisdom is there. The truth is there. But if we are staying under the veil of maya, under the veil of our likes and our dislikes, under the veil of our emotions, the veil of our ego, the veil of our attachments, the veil of our expectations. If we're staying under the veil of that, that's our choice. Freedom is there. Light is there. Moksha is there. Truth is there. But if we want to stay behind the curtain, it's up to us. So we have to use that free will. 